This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Yes, we're on our 100-city tour, marking Democracy Now!'s 20th anniversary. Today, I'll be speaking in Albuquerque, and I'll be in Los Alamos and Santa Fe at the Lensic on Tuesday. On Wednesday, I'll be in Flagstaff, Thursday in Phoenix and Tucson, then on Friday in Fresno, Saturday in Grass Valley. Then we're on to Houston and New Orleans on Sunday and beyond. Check democracynow.org. As we turn right now, uh, back to Seymour Hirsch, who has a new book out. It's called The Killing of Osama bin Laden. Uh, Sai, I want to ask you about the presidential race. Last year, at a debate in New Hampshire, um, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders accused former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton of being, quote, too much into regime change. This is what he said. But I think, and I say this with due respect, that I worry too much that Secretary Clinton is too much into regime change and a little bit too aggressive without knowing what the unintended consequences might be. We, yes, we could get rid of Saddam Hussein, but that destabilized the entire region. Yes, we could get rid of Gaddafi, a terrible dictator, but that created a vacuum for ISIS. Yes, we could get rid of Assad tomorrow, but that would create another political vacuum that would benefit ISIS. So I think, yeah, regime change is easy. Getting rid of dictators is easy. But before you do that, you got to think about what happens the day after. Now, with all due respect, Senator, you voted for regime change with respect to Libya. You joined the Senate in voting to get rid of Gaddafi, and you asked that there be a Security Council validation of that with a resolution. All of these are very difficult issues. That's Hillary Clinton and uh, Bernie Sanders debating in New Hampshire a while ago. So, Seymour Hirsch, if you could talk about this issue and this most recent news, uh, Charles Koch, the Republican mega donor, the oil baron, saying he could see himself actually supporting Hillary Clinton over a Republican nominee. Well, I don't believe that for a minute, but that's another story. What Koch said, I think that's just all part of pressure to get rid of Trump, who in some ways Trump's pretty I mean, whoever heard of a Republican talking about the NATO's useless, which of course pretty much a lot of people I know believe it is pretty much useless. Um, there's a lot of things Trump said that are pretty remarkable. He would talk to, to Putin, uh, et cetera. Those, it's, it's, it's a pretty interesting campaign on the Republicans, how they're sort of internally eating up themselves. Um, but um, Sanders is right, of course, about that issue. Um, I, I, I don't think Sanders is as sound on foreign policy as I, I'd love him to be. Um, I wish him to be. I don't think he really— he doesn't quite understand the consequences um, of, of he doesn't I don't think he's terribly he, he just hasn't done enough to make me comfortable but of course um, Hillary the, the, the my favorite line about Hillary Clinton is after uh, Gaddafi was executed as you know he was killed by his own people he was actually uh, sodomized by swords it was a horrible death as she said on one show we came uh, we saw and he died with a laugh and that kind of talk is sort of uh, almost uh, bizarre. Um, you know, here's what I think about this campaign. It doesn't matter—you know, I've, it's clear where I, my political uh, thoughts are, but it's for me to say who I'm going to vote for and all that. I don't think anybody—you know, I'm not a political leader. That's not what I'm into. But I will say this. Something that's amazing is happening in this country. And for the first time, I, you know, I do think it's going to be very hard for a lot of the people who support uh, Sanders to, to support Hillary Clinton. Now, times can change. Uh, there's a lot more time to go. We've got months before an election and a convention, et cetera. Um, but at this point, um, I'm at the point where I, I go back to the old days. Remember, if you you might not remember, we had we had a lot of talk about a third party in America, a progressive third party. Barry Commoner was one of the people who was going to run it. Went nowhere. But there's really, it seems to me, with what's going on now with these 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 people 45 and under, the enormous support they're giving. Uh, to Sanders, just uh, we know by polling, et cetera, it doesn't always show up in the. It turns out in the election results. I mean, it certainly didn't show up in New York, um, and so. But they are there. There's a, a whole group of young people in America, across the board, all races, et cetera, et cetera, who have just had it with our system, and there's something wonderful in the. You know, um, uh, look, I've been to Israel many times. I have a lot of friends there, and there's a lot of very good people there. But we all know it's. It's headed for—it's it's chaos coming. And here we have a guy running for president 
this is something I guess you you know forbidden a forbidden statement, but he's the first the first Democrat since I've I've been watching politics 50 I'm old uh, older and crankier than Bernie but anyway um, it's the first Democrat that I can remember that actually did not have to go to the Jewish community in New York to get money to run. And that's something amazing. We may be able to actually change our policy and let the Israelis know that there's going to have to be a settlement, uh, a reason not just divided, not just two countries, but a real settlement, a peace settlement in that area. And um, we've seen some terrific changes happening in this election. As the Democratic Party has been moving to the left, with a lot of contempt for the way the party manages itself by the people who are pro-working, uh, are interested in Sanders, the, the, look at the chaos on the right. Our system is basically breaking apart right now in this election, and you can only say, yay, it's great. So it's, it's in Kuwait. It's not very good. It's a little bit like uh, the new generation of journalism we have with uh, tweeting and, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, and blogging um, that's going to clearly replace the newspapers, which are dying as we sit every day. Uh, it's, it's all sort of a new world coming. So, I mean, President Obama appeared on Fox News on Sunday a few weeks ago, and he was asked what was the worst mistake of his presidency. This was his response. Probably failing to plan for the day after uh, what I think was the right thing to do in, in uh, intervening in Libya. Can you respond and particularly focus on Hillary as Secretary of State under President Obama? First of all, uh, you're just going to have to take my word for it. Um, Gaddafi was a tame cat. We got to him in the Bush-Cheney years. Uh, if you remember the history, uh, uh, we had a lot of bad trouble. Uh, uh, Bush and Cheney were, um, would, I think, normally would be embarrassed, should have been embarrassed by the, the, uh, the lies they told and the mistakes they made, let's put it that way, about the WMDs, that the, the, the Saddam did not have an ongoing nuclear weapon system, uh, which was known to an awful lot of people before, be, be, uh, before, it, it sh before we took over Baghdad and discovered nothing. At that point, I think it was a year later, in 2004, suddenly Gaddafi, after allegedly having caught uh, he, we, we caught a ship full of some uh, uh, dual-use goods, and we stopped a ship that was going to, to uh, Tripoli with it, he suddenly announced that he was, he was giving up, unilaterally going to give up all his chemical arsenal and his uh, WMD, his uh, nuclear plans or options. And it was a big victory at a very much needed time uh, by the Bush and Cheney crowd. There was a victory that showed our policy is working right. Uh, money was involved, the CIA, covert money. A lot of stuff was going on. I, as you know, I've been doing a book about Cheney for a long time. Um, and uh, I can tell you that uh, th th there was a considerable amount of CIA activity involved to, t to turn him around. I don't think, uh, which is amazing, it's clear to me that the president and, and Hillary, uh, um, the secretary of state, did not know about this secret agreement made. Uh, it's just amazing to me that one administration will leave. It's one of the things I first learned from a friend who went to work, I think it was way back, maybe it was for Clinton. Uh, this friend be, were, got, a, got a job, a high-ranking job in the government. The first thing he discovered that all the files <laughs> related to everything significant that had happened, all the agreements that had made in his area, it was in the State Department, had been gone, had been cleaned out. There was, nothing was left. So they were, they were, you know, as I said, they were, they were going after a guy that had been doing a lot of good work for us, believe it or not, horrible as he was, he was a horrible human being. Um, a, a bad things happened inside that country to the people. Uh, but. Uh, he was uh, actively working with us uh, uh, on the Al Qaeda issue, and you know, if they, I don't believe Al Qaeda exists there. I think the Al Qaeda we talked about disappeared with Bin Laden. There's just copycats, and we like to call it Al Qaeda. But uh, Sunni jihadists, Sunni um, 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 Salafists, and Wahhabis uh, extremists are, are spreading all over, in, in part in response to what we did uh, after 9/11. But that's that's the story we all know. Um, so, they didn't really know what the hell had happened with Gaddafi. They took out a guy that um, uh, didn't need to go, and the French were pushing for it, and we went along. It looked good. It's a little bit like putting a couple hundred guys and maybe a lot more that we don't know about into, into Syria now, and many more than that into Iraq, um, when the, when God knows what's going to happen in both places. Um, it's just—it's done without consulting the Congress. 
which probably this Congress probably doesn't want to be consulted, but that's the you know the Constitution is not a nuisance. As, as many in the, in the Republican Party, as Bush and Cheney, and now in many areas, even Obama believes it seems to be a nuisance. We don't tell Congress anything. We don't go and we don't tell the people anything. And the control, the control of the media that goes on now, the major media is, is uh, I think, much more acute now. I, 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 I can go days wondering, you know, um, why we don't do more aggressive reporting on certain things.